This video is brought to you by Squarespace. With the release of the Sony FX30 in APS-C cinema camera, I think that uh, I speak for a lot of people out there. This was a very confusing release. I mean, there's already like a hundred different cameras and sub cameras for every line of cameras with Sony. And this just kind of muddied the waters a little bit more. See, I don't blame you if you're confused on what camera to buy. There's just so many of them. And see, Sony's marketing for the FX30 was this is the creator's, like creator's upgrade. Like if creators want a pro camera, this is their pro camera for video. I think they missed, I, I think they missed it. That's not it. But they can keep thinking that because they're charging us $1,800 for a camera that is clearly a pro tool. I'm not even complaining because I'm definitely going to get one. But luckily for you, almost every Sony camera in like the past five years has passed through my hands at some point. I'm going to give you guys my recommendations per price range, the camera that I think is best. And I'm going to make try to make this ADHD friendly. So I'm going to try to get straight to the point. So if I only had $1,000, I'm going to pick up the A6400 for photography, mainly because, well, ergonomically, it's got a C1 and C2 button up top. So I feel like that's, you know, ergonomically good for photography, change your molds really fast. You know, it's got a 24 megapixel sensor. It shoots 11 frames per second, and it's got real-time IAF and touch tracking, sophisticated autofocus like the more expensive cameras have. Overall, it does pretty good video. It's a good hybrid camera, but that'll be my first option for a photo. Now, if I'm choosing a camera for video, it's an easy one. The Sony ZV-E10, which has a lot of the guts of the A6400, except the body and ergonomics are catered more toward someone shooting video. So no custom buttons, but you get that big record button up here. Um, one of the biggest advantages of using a camera like this is that flip screen, okay? It flips out to the side. So what does that mean? That means if you put a mic up top right here, the mic is not gonna be blocking the screen because the 6400 flips that way. The overall design of the ZV-E10 is aimed more at a content creator. You got the red tally light here letting you know that you're recording. Now, let's say that you have $2,000. $2,000 is your budget and you want a camera for photography. This is when things get a little dicey, a little bit interesting, right? Because I don't know if you ever heard of the Sony a7 III, probably one of the most popular cameras ever, ever released. Um, this is actually a7 IV. Oh, I don't have the a7 III. Sorry, I forgot. I sold it. This is the Sony a7R III, okay? If you want to invest in full frame cameras, you know, there's the lenses are more expensive, a little bit more bigger than APS-C. You can get these cameras used for $1,300, $1,400. And sensor tech has definitely stagnated, okay? Which means that the quality that you can get out of an a7 III, a7R III is going to be very comparable to cameras, the higher tier, top tier cameras of today in 2022 in terms of quality. So if I had $2,000 and I wanted to invest in full frame, I would get a used A7 III, A7 R3 for, for that price point. I almost forgot about the Sony A7C. This is a miniature A7 III, pretty much the same guts, sensor everything inside, except it's in a different form factor. It's got like, it gives you the benefit of like a smaller APS-C size form factor. This one has a side flippy screen. Uh, so it's better for, let's say, content creation or video. But I would say it's worse for photography than the a7 III, not because it's not as capable, but the EVF is so much smaller. It's like you got to dig your eyeball in here to see what's going on in the, in the EVF. So for that reason alone, I would consider this more as a, a of a video camera. But let's just say that we're not, we're sticking with APS-C. So for photography under $2,000, I'm going to have to recommend an APS-C camera, and that's the A6600. So what makes the A6600 so special for photography? Well, not much, actually. It's just, it's got some improvements over the A64. So it's got IBIS, built-in stabilization. It's got the bigger battery, you know, the bigger grip, but also it keeps the same form factor. So those are two big upgrades right there. It's got the same amazing autofocus. And the reason why I picked this for photography is because unlike these video centric cameras, uh, the 6600 has a C1 and C2 button up top. And I always find that having those two custom buttons right there, easily accessible is great. It's great for their, you know, ergonomically, it's great for taking stills. For under $2,000, this one is a no brainer in my opinion. The FX30 is the best, in my opinion, the best video centric camera under $2,000. And that goes for any brand. 
for what it gives you for the size of the center and everything else is absolutely crazy how much camera you get for the price so i'm going fx30 for sure 100 percent under two thousand dollars for video all right now this is when we get to the good part under three thousand dollars what camera would i recommend mostly for photography that's going to be an easy one the sony a7 IV probably the best hybrid camera for the money that you can find anywhere the a7 IV has a 32 33 megapixel sensor it it is, I mean, you're ta I'm talking beautiful image quality. And there, again, you could get a higher resolution camera, possibly the A7R4, but that's 61 megapixels. In my opinion, that's way too much. Like this is the sweet spot in my opinion. So for me, under $3,000, I want a camera that can mostly do photography. I'm going with the A7 IV. If I want to pick up a camera mostly for video under $3,000, again, it's really hard not to recommend the a7 IV, even for APS-C, because you can shoot in APS-C mode on this camera. The problem is, <sighs> it's full frame. I love full frame. I would still pick the FX30 over the a7 IV for video under $3,000. And I know I still, there's a gap there, but think about it for a second. You get so much more in terms of video, right? In terms of audio, the embedded LUTs, you get the 4K 120. I know it's it's cropped, but it doesn't matter. The fact that it's you have that option and everything else that comes with this camera. I already made a whole video on it. All right, let's just talk audio for a second. To get the same kind of quality audio that you can with this camera on the a7 IV, you would have to buy the K3M adapter. That's $600. It comes with the mic, though, but that pushes the a7 IV over $3,000. To get XLR quality audio with this camera, you're going to spend $2,200, I believe. It's a lot cheaper. I'm going to pick the FX30 over the a7 IV for video primarily. So now if I had $4,000 and I'm picking a camera for mainly stills, I know that the a7R4 is out there. But as of right now, I'm still picking the a7 IV. I think, it's, again, it's the perfect balance of resolution um, and speed. 32, 33 megapixels. The files look great. It's more than 24. It's less than 60. I mean, I, I think it's that sweet spot. So A7 IV for stills, for video, for mainly video, this is where it gets it gets a little tough, right? So the A7S III is probably one of the most iconic cameras that Sony's ever released, right? Like the A7 III kind of changed the game. A7S III changed the game for like video-centric cameras because they put everything in it. The biggest advantage of the a7s3 is having the evf and being able to see you know and it's a really good evf and being able to preview and see your exposure in the eye cup if if it's a sunny day or whatever and that's that's really nice to have the thing is that i would pick the a7s3 over the fx3 if the fx3 was still in firmware one but now that the fx3 has firmware two there are so many like benefits to having the new man the new menu system embedding the LUTs. I don't know. I'm such a huge fan of this body style and the look of it and everything. I'm probably going to go with the FX3 as my main video camera. But at the same time, I wouldn't be opposed to picking up two FX30s for the price of one FX3. I lose out on some things. I gain in others. But at the end of the day, I'm getting very similar color output. And I've been switching back and forth in this video. The colors look I mean, identical. I have that crazy dynamic range in S-Log 3. I get all the crazy benefits of the firmware 2, the FX3 update. I mean, I'm a huge fan of this camera. I wouldn't be opposed to getting two. But if I had to pick one video camera, I would pick the FX3. With that same $4,000 budget, what camera would I pick as a hybrid camera for stills and video? Um, I'm going with the a7 IV again. Surprise, surprise. I think the a7 IV, it doesn't matter what budget you have, honestly. It doesn't matter what budget. I think the a7 IV is the best hybrid camera, even more of a hybrid camera, in my opinion, than the Sony A1, although my A1 is my favorite camera, my favorite camera of all time, mirrorless camera of all time. I would still pick the a7 IV over it because it has the flip screen. And for me, me being a content creator, I need that flip screen. And so I would pick the a7 IV over the A1. And any benefits of the A1 are kind of trumped by that flip screen. So it just, at the end of the day, it just depends on your needs, what you need. And, you know, uh, you got to make your decision there. But 
All right, so those are the cameras that I recommend for different budgets. Again, I have hands-on time with all of these cameras and I own most of them. This is just from my experience. In my opinion, you may think different, but I hope this video helps. Now, um, I got I to gotta send a shout out to my sponsor. That is Squarespace. So if you have been looking for a website, blog, or an online store, why aren't you on Squarespace yet? Um, I've been using Squarespace for, I mean, at least like four or five years. I love the way my work looks. They have 24 seven customer support. If you want to start an online store, it's so easy to do that. And it's a great way of, uh, you know, making side income. Um, I saw my Lightroom presets. I'm a retouching tutorial on my website. Honestly, though, every entrepreneur needs their own website because Instagram, Facebook, that's not yours. And that's not the, the proper way of presenting yourself to a client. Um, if you want to try Squarespace for yourself, it's so easy to use. Use the coupon code Manny and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. I'll uh, holla at you later.